Today I'm harvesting sweet potatoes and I thought I would bring you along with me as we see what has come of this year's harvest. Now I've been growing sweet potatoes for several years and they're fairly easy to grow in my southeastern climate in Arkansas. But this year I did do a few things differently. So as I start cutting down these vines, getting ready to see what's underneath, I'll share with you when I planted, when I'm harvesting, why I planted here and let the sweet potatoes grow up this trellis and if that's even necessary, and how many I chose to plant this year for our family. That was one of the biggest changes I made. So let's see what kind of harvest we have this year. The first thing that I do when I'm getting ready to harvest sweet potatoes is cut down all the vines. This makes it so much easier to be able to dig the sweet potatoes when you kind of can see where you're digging. The first thing that you'll notice is I chose to grow these sweet potatoes on this arch trellis. Now sweet potatoes don't have to be grown vertically. They can sprawl across the ground and if you've ever grown sweet potatoes you know they definitely sprawl across the ground which was really the reason I decided to plant them to be able to grow up this trellis. I didn't want my whole garden space to be overrun with the sweet potato vines like I've seen in the past. For the most part, I would say that for sure worked. You can see that there is some sprawling down at the bottom of the trellis, but overall, being able to train them on these arch trellises has worked out really well this year. Next, let's talk about timing. That's probably the biggest question I have when it comes to growing sweet potatoes is when to plant them. One thing that I've been doing with sweet potatoes for many years is I actually grow slips from the previous year's harvest. I have a YouTube video right here. You can go and see how I do that. So I actually haven't bought any sweet potato slips since my very first season because I've just kept the potatoes and I've grown the slips off of them year after year. But deciding when to start those slips was kind of a tricky thing with timing. And I ended up settling on starting to grow out those sweet potato slips about six to seven weeks before I intended to plant them out in the garden. That seemed to work out pretty well. One thing I did notice is if the potatoes that were in my pantry had not started to sprout by that time, they can take a little bit longer. But if you see them starting to already come out of their dormancy and sprout, that can take a lot less time. So plant timing can sometimes depend on if you're starting slips from your own sweet potatoes, whether or not they've naturally come out of dormancy or not. As far as when to plant them in the garden, sweet potatoes love the heat. So sweet potatoes are actually one of the last crops that I'll plant in my summer garden, along with peppers, but often I'll plant my sweet potatoes even after my peppers. So what that meant for me in my Arkansas climate where our average last frost date is mid-April, is I started my sweet potato slips about the third week of March, and then I planted them out in the garden, I believe about the first or second week of May. A lot of times I'll watch the weather and if I can see that for sure we're, we're in the 80s pretty much every day minimum, then I can get the sweet potatoes in the ground. I don't have to be in a rush to get sweet potatoes in the ground because with an Arkansas climate, we have such a long growing season that I have more time to be able to do that and not be in such a rush. But for those of you who are in cooler climates where you have shorter seasons, timing is a much bigger factor because you wanna be able to get your sweet potatoes harvested before the frost sets in in the fall. That brings us to when to harvest. I'm actually harvesting these in the middle of October, and this is about the latest that I've ever harvested sweet potatoes. Like I said, if I'm starting them in May, a lot of times I can harvest in September. One year I harvested at the end of August and got great results. I found sometimes if I wait too late, I get really large sweet potatoes. And the larger they get, the more tough they can get. They're still edible, but they're not as great a quality if you get them the size that you would see at the grocery store. Sometimes some very overripe sweet potatoes were almost football size. So keeping them in the ground too long cannot always be the best idea, especially if you have a longer growing season. These though, I waited to harvest till now because I noticed for some reason they didn't produce as much foliage and vines as they have in the past. So I wanted to give them a little extra time. And they just started developing flowers a few weeks ago, which was kind of late compared to previous harvests. So I decided to leave them in the ground a little bit longer. 
we'll see when I actually go to harvest if that was a good idea or not. The next thing I did differently this year was I changed the quantity of sweet potato plants that I grew. For several years, I was growing lots of pounds of sweet potatoes. One year, I think it was over 100 pounds or maybe it was close to 100 pounds. And we have a family of four that doesn't eat a ton of sweet potatoes. So what I found is that I had so many sweet potatoes in my pantry that were starting to sprout come spring and I had to throw a lot of them in the compost. It was just wasted. So I really didn't want to devote that much garden space to them because I didn't need that much. That's something that you really learn to do once you get experience with gardening is say, okay, did I need more of a certain crop or do I need less of a certain crop? So this year I decided to plant only four plants of sweet potatoes. So these are two four by eight raised beds and I planted two sweet potato slips per bed. I positioned them where they're right in front of the arch trellis so that they could go up but I also have the Garden in Minutes garden grid on these beds, and so they were able to get plenty of irrigation even though they were at the edge of the bed. And sometimes the edges of the bed tend to dry out a little bit more. We'll have to see with the harvest if cutting it back to just four sweet potato slips was worth it or if I need to increase in future years. I got most of that side. Let's start working on this side. These are the flowers I was telling you about how they just started flowering. and. Usually that indicates that the sweet potato plant is nearing or at maturity. I've read conflicting things on that. If you've read something that tells me for sure what the flowering actually means, put that in the comments. But usually since it happens toward the end of the season, I kind of use that as a cue of they are almost ready or they're about ready to harvest. Time to dig this bed. Let's see what we've got. Now this particular variety, I don't know what it is because I bought it my first year trying to grow sweet potatoes. I bought it at the grocery store. It was an organic sweet potato and I developed slips off of it. So I looked up, maybe garnet, I'm not quite sure. It has different shaped leaves. If you notice when I was taking off the leaves, they almost had like a star shaped leaf, which is different than what you would see with most sweet potatoes. So I really don't even know what kind it is. I've had people suggest things, but the different shaped leaf has definitely thrown me because you don't see that typically. But it has consistently produced well year after year, saving the sweet potatoes and then developing slips. I think that's it for that particular plant. This is what I got from just that one plant. So not bad. Let's take a look at the other plant. So this is what I mean by a really large sweet potato that will probably be a tiny bit tough. This would probably be good in like soups or things where I have to have to dice them more finely. It's not probably one I'd want to eat like baked or anything like that, but it's still, we can use it. You see how the size of it, pretty large. And that particular variety is Beauregard, which is a very popular variety. I bought those slips from a local garden center my first year. And since then I've been saving this, this sweet potato each year to develop off of that. So I've pretty much been growing those two varieties for many years. So that one, just basically produced that big one and this medium sized one. So not, not as great as the redder variety. We've got both of those varieties in the other bed. Let's go and check those out and see how that harvest will do. So that one again was actually a really decent harvest of this red variety of sweet pota potato. Quite a few perfect sizes, not any majorly large ones. So I'm really 
happy with that. Let's see if the Beauregards over here do any better than the Beauregards that we just harvested. This is a good size too. This is actually a perfect size for developing sweet potato slips on it next year because it's only about a couple of inches in diameter. And so this is one that I will probably say several sweet potato slips can be developed just from this one. So this one will probably be my stock for next summer. Here's what I've got from my sweet potato harvest from four plants. I'm actually very content with this and I think that it will work out really well for our family this year. And if I discover that I wish I had more, I know how many more I can plant. One thing I will say is that in the past, I feel like I had more harvest per plant, depending on where I grew it. If I grew it in a particular raised bed that may have had more fertility or more sunlight. That's the thing about this. This side facing that way is west. So there was shade on these plants. Um, you know, they were growing obviously, but we've got a tree over there on the east side. So these plants got more shade than they've gotten in past harvest. So I do feel like the sunlight probably played a role, but overall I'm definitely happy with this harvest. The one challenge for me this year will be because I didn't harvest these until October when our heat and when our humidity has already passed, curing these will be a little bit more challenging because sweet potatoes are best cured in very hot like 80s 90s degree weather and then also very high humidity when I harvest in August and September we usually still have plenty of that so it's easy but in October it's gonna be a little bit more difficult so I'm gonna have to figure out some options for that I may put them in my greenhouse to get the heat maybe put a bucket of water or a wet bath towel you know in the vicinity to up the humidity but those are some workarounds some people put their sweet potatoes in the bathroom so the heat and the humidity from the showers can help cure them for a few weeks um, so those are just some options that's definitely going to present me with a little bit more challenge proper curing will definitely let them last longer and will also help them last until the next season starting those new sweet potato slips if you're wanting to know more about growing sweet potatoes i have several videos of previous plantings and previous harvest all the way from starting my own slips to growing them in straw bales so make sure to check out these videos to learn more about growing sweet potatoes in your garden i hope you've enjoyed coming along with me as i've harvested this sweet potato crop and if you want more videos like this make sure and like and subscribe for more